about. When does an acoustic echo occur? We're not going to deal with the, too much with the biophysical details that underlie this. I'm going to be very empirical in this and introduce the term of acoustic impedance, which is given by Z equals the density times the velocity, uh, speed velocity. These are the units. And instead of writing all this stuff here, one calls them rails. Don't know why they call them rails. Probably some Mr. Rail invented them. Well, this is to give you some idea of what is the variation in acoustic in impedance between different tissues. You have air, which is very low. You have lung, a bit higher. Lung is not just pure air. Then fat, water, kidney, blood, liver, muscle. They're all about the same. And then you've got skull bone, which is substantially higher than the others, about a factor of five. So, but from the acoustic impedance, which is the property of the tissue, its stiffness, if you will, one can deduce the amount of reflected wave energy. And this is given by the initial intensity times the reflection coefficients R, coefficient R here. That gives you the reflected intensity. So what defines the occurrence of an acoustic echo is that one needs to have two different tissues with different mechanical properties, i.e. two different acoustic impedances. And this will give us uh, the echo formation. So here I've got a simplified object with an acoustic impedance Z1 and another uh, tissue with Z2. And the reflection coefficient is given by this equation here. It's a difference of the uh, uh, acoustic impedance divided by the sum of the acoustic impedance squared. That's the reflection coefficient that tells us how much, what percentage of the acoustic wave is reflected. Now, neglecting all the other facts, the probability of reflection and transmission is 1. So we can calculate the transmission coefficient. This is just 1 minus r, the reflection coefficient. And if one does that and does the math, one obtains this expression here. So that's the transmission coefficient here. OK, so now what are the different reflection coefficients between different tissues? I'm giving you a list here of different tissues, because we have had on the previous slide some ideas of the, reflect of the acoustic impedance. And we're going to just look at, between fat and water, the reflection coefficient is 0.47. This means about 5% of the energy is bouncing back. Then we've got muscle and water, muscle and fat between 2 and 7%. Skin fat versus water fat and muscle, it's between 1 and 8%. Here is brain, liver, and blood. Do you get the idea? They're awfully low. It's not a lot of echo that comes back. Imagine you're in the mountains, you do your nice song like they do the, the, the shepherds in the mountains, and there is only 2% of the echo that comes back. That's a lot of hollering that you have to do to get something back. OK, but that's the fact. Then we got cranial bone, and now we're in 50 60% range of reflected energy, and plexiglass is in the order of 33%. OK, so what does that mean, cranial bone? is so high, what's the consequence of having such a high um, reflection of the solid versus soft tissue? It means when you have solid material, you have a lot of reflection of the sound waves. For example, bone tissue interface. And that produces an artifact in the images which is called shadow formation. OK, let's say you want to look at a lesion behind the bone, you send out the ultrasound, but 60% of the signal is reflected, so only 40% goes through. So there's a 60% reduction in intensity. Now in this case, it means only 45% of the energy passes the cranial bone. So I'm going to illustrate this principle. But first, before I do so, I'll give you an example here. This is the gallbladder. This is a gallstone. The ultrasound is up here. 
what happens is the goldstone is solid material, so there's a lot of the wave energy is reflected. Because the amplitude is high, it's, it shows up as a very high signal. But this energy is missing down here, and so you got the shadow formation behind the gallstone where you lost intensity and therefore ability to, to detect lesions. So how does this happen? So let's assume I got bone here. I'll just take the example of bone. I've got some tissue boundary that one would like to image here. And we have an incoming wave at 100%. Only 45% goes on. Let's assume it's perfectly reflected at this boundary. That's the perfect case. And 45% comes back, but again, only 45% passes through the bone. So in the end, you have only 20% of the signal. And that's why you got this shadow here in this case. Here's another example from the video I showed you last week. That's from the dolphin fetus. And you can see these streaking artifacts here. The scan head is up here. This is the uterus, and here is the fetus. These streaking artifacts correspond to the bones of the rib cage. Each one of the bones reflects the energy, and so it produces the shadow formation, just like the gallstone here. 